Hello, welcome to Canadian Independent Media. My name is Jack Etkin. It's August the 13th. This week, GMO Salmon, Mount Pauly and the NDP, the Kinder Morgan Pipeline, climate change, and the CIA and the media. Our first story, GMO salmon are now being sold in Canada. Genetically contaminated salmon fillets are now being sold, unlabeled of course, in Canadian stores. The salmon manufacturer, called Aqua Bounty, reports it sold 10,000 pounds of GMO salmon to a Canadian store between April and June of this year. The identity of the store is unknown. Canada is the first country in the world to force its citizens to eat a genetically contaminated fish or animal. According to the group CBAN, the company did not disclose where the GMO salmon fillets were sold, and CBAN says they are shocked to discover that they have entered the market at this time. According to National Public Radio in the United States, the Aquabounty salmon are all female and their chromosomes have been altered to make them sterile. The GMO salmon contains a growth hormone from a Chinook salmon and a gene from an eel. These changes make the salmon grow twice as fast as normal. And we Canadians are the guinea pigs thanks to our pathetic parliament. And meanwhile, Canada's corporate-owned media are doing a pretty good job of keeping the story quiet. Uh, next, Ed Johnson with a follow-up on no provincial charges in British Columbia's biggest ever environmental disaster. Thanks, Jack. We reported last week that the new NDP government in British Columbia has decided not to press charges in the case of the Mount Pauly mining disaster, where the failure of a tailings pond, as you remember, led to the poisoning of one of the most pristine lakes in the world, Gwinnell Lake. This is what happened in August of 2014. When it comes to an environmental disaster at a mine, few top this. 10 million cubic meters of water in a tailing pond suddenly broke free, sending tons of mud, sand and debris into a tiny creek, which became a torrent and flowed into Quinell Lake. At a packed community meeting, the company said it takes full responsibility, but it doesn't know why it happened. The poisons included 400 tons of arsenic, 177 tons of lead, and much more. We can see from this CTV story that the NDP has decided not to press charges against the company. But the CTV story itself is a bit strange. It says, British Columbia Premier John Horgan says he was shocked to learn that no provincial charges will be laid in the 2014 collapse at Mount Pauly. But Mr. Horgan is the Premier of British Columbia. He and his government have the ability to lay the charges. How can he be shocked to learn that no charges were laid when he didn't lay them? There are two questions here. First, why did the NDP not lay charges? And second, why are the media letting the NDP completely off the hook? There was virtually no criticism from the media when the provincial statute of limitations passed in August and the NDP did nothing. And as for why they didn't lay charges, we've contacted a government spokesman on this issue four times now, and there is still no official answer to that question of why. They have said, it's a tough question, and so far there is no answer. So the question is, are the corporate media and the NDP working together to let Mount Pauly off the hook? Well, that does seem to be what is actually happening. Maybe we should all be asking what is going on. The big story in BC last week was about the NDP and the Kinder Morgan pipeline. Yeah, the NDP has taken a more major role in the Kinder Morgan pipeline fight. Uh, the BC government has asked the court for intervener status in a case scheduled to begin in October of this year. Uh, the case in question is a combination of 19 separate lawsuits from First Nations, municipalities and environmental groups challenging the NEP, the NEB approval process. The government also said that Kinder Morgan cannot begin work on public lands 
until environmental assessments are complete. I'm not sure exactly what that means because of course you can't begin the work until the assessments are complete. Uh, the government also said that no work can start on First Nations land without further negotiations. However, Kinder Morgan does plan to begin work in September on privately owned lands that have been removed from the ALR in the Abbotsford and Chilliwack areas. It seems the Agricultural Land Commission removed land from about 620 different properties along the route that Kinder Morgan plans to use. And this was done a few days prior to the NDP being sworn in as government. So what's going to happen with the Kinder Morgan pipeline remains to be seen. Next, climate change. And we have to wake up in a hurry and uh, we have to change now. I read over and over and over that the scientists leading the IPC said that emissions must have reversed, this was their quote, by 2015 at the latest to avoid catastrophic global climate change. We're in 2017 now, right? So catastrophic global climate change is now unavoidable and nobody wants to say that. I know nobody wants to say it, but I also know it's the truth. From multiple lines of evidence, it's the truth. I could just take the coral reefs. I could just take the Great Barrier Reef. We are locked in to a planetary catastrophe. The Great Barrier Reef is going to die. It's actually dying. Um, it's suffering a major second in a row bleaching event, unprecedented. And it sounds like it's a very severe unprecedented event. The scientists have already determined that the 35 or 40 percent of the Great Barrier Reef which bleached, half of that is dead. So we have lost a very large proportion already of the Great Barrier Reef, a jewel of the planet. I, my God. Our final story is about how the CIA writes the news. Uh, Udo Ulf Kott is not well known in Canada, but he should be. In 2014, Mr. Ulf Kott published the book Gekofte Journalisten, which means German bought journalists. The book says the CIA and German intelligence bribed and forced journalists to write pro-NATO propaganda stories and that journalists who would not do this can lose their jobs. Mr. Ulfkot said that he himself, as an editor of one of Germany's largest papers, was told by the CIA to plant stories saying Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi was building poison gas factories. There are reports that sales of the English version of the book have been suppressed in Canada and the United States. Uh, Mr. Ulfkot said he was forced to publish the works of intelligence agents under his own name, also adding that non-compliance with these orders would have resulted in him losing his job. Well, I, I've been a journalist for about 25 years and I was educated to lie, to betray and uh, not to tell the truth to the public. But seeing right now, within the last months, how, how far, um, uh, how, how the German and American media tries to bring war to the people in Europe, to bring war to Russia, uh, this is a point of no return. And I, I stand, I'm going to stand up and say, um, it is not right what I have done in the past. The reason writing this book was that I, I am very fearful of a new war in Europe and I don't like to have this situation again because uh, war is no, never coming from itself. There is always people behind it to push for war. And this is not only politicians, this is journalists too because I don't want this anymore. I'm fed up with this propaganda. We live in a banana republic and not in a democratic country where we have press freedom. Mr. Ulfkot died at the beginning of 2017. His book was a bestseller in Germany, but he said no mainstream German journalist could report on it or they would be sacked. 
And I believe it's exactly the same here in Canada, in the sense that everyone who works for the corporate-owned media must do as they are told. In Canada, only the corporate truth is allowed in the corporate media. Certainly, there's been very little, if any, mention of Mr. Ulfcourt and this remarkable story anywhere in Canada's corporate-owned media. That's Canadian Independent Media for this week. For myself and Ed Johnson, thanks for watching. Thank you.